Hi, happy Thursday. Thanks for joining me here tonight. We are going to continue on some basic uh, quilt blocks and we're going to make these for our Orofill Block of the Month quilt. Uh, so thanks for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight, uh, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so, all right, you guys, I'm here for about an hour. And uh, tonight we are working on some of these cute basic blocks. I'm doing 20 different basic quilt blocks. These are a lot of times called uh, units or builder units. Uh, you can use them to make larger, more fancy star blocks and that sort of thing. But they're also just very sweet on their own, uh, these smaller blocks. We're doing 20. Uh, they're going to be the cornerstones uh, for our Orofill quilt. So for the quilt, we have our blocks that we made last year for the Orofill block of the month, and they're 12 inches big. We're going to have four inch sashing, which is like an inner border around each, each block. And uh, where those borders meet is a cornerstone. And it, that is just a little thing that connects all the sashing around the blocks. And that's where we're going to put these guys. And it's just fun. We are, I think we've, um, how many, do we, I think we have 13 done so far. So 13 of 20 and uh, they're getting a little bit more difficult today. Not more difficult, but a little bit more into it. We're still doing some half square triangle esque blocks today. And uh, I think it's gonna be fun. We're gonna we're gonna do it. I had to I had to look it up how to do these blocks uh, just like five minutes ago and make some notes. But we're gonna get it. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining me, you guys. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for popping in tonight. Lenore from Kenosha. Nice seeing you, Leticia. Hello, Irene. Nice seeing y'all pop in tonight. Uh, we're on YouTube and Facebook here again. All right, we have been checking them off the list here. Uh, we'll take a look at them quick here as well. But tonight, we're going to be doing this double pinwheel. I had to write some notes for myself here. So the double pinwheel block, and I'd like to do the hourglass block. And I think we're actually going to get like two out of here. So I'm going to have a random hourglass block uh, sitting around, which is totally fine. And then if we get beyond that, I think those might take a little time, both of those. Uh, but if we get beyond that, then we can do maybe this uh, sawtooth star or this attic window. That might, that looks pretty easy. Um, all right. So, but to start off, we are going to do this pinwheel one. And then we'll have like the row number one done. So the first 10. So here are the blocks so far though. I just, these are so cute. Uh, just laying them out like this, I think. And it's making me want to just do a quilt of basic blocks. Like, I, you know, just even pick one of these and make a quilt out of it would be super fun. We did this guy last night. Uh, we focused on half square triangle ones last night. That was fun. And then the little snowball one here. So this is where we're at so far. They're all using the gray. Uh, this is very similar to our Orofill blocks, the bigger blocks. Um, those all have gray in them and then a completely different color scheme. So it's very rainbowy with the gray. Um, and uh, so the theme was colors of Italy. So we have all sorts of colors. Each block has a different theme and we're just kind of bringing that back in using up some of this fabric, right? So, all right, uh, let's pile these up again. This is still, I'm still really liking him right there. I love that red and the gray together. Just kind of like that darker red. Um, I don't know, I'm digging that one. I do actually like this snowball one too. These, these two together would be like a sweet quilt with this red and the blue and then just the gray. That'd be just a nice, chill, happy qu quilt. <laughs> All right. So for the double pinwheel, uh, these were suggestions from you guys on some basic blocks and I looked them all up and figured out how to do them. Uh, this double pinwheel one, we're actually making a half square triangle, which is what we did last night for all these, a bigger half square triangle. And then we're using that with another solid piece to make more half square triangles. <laughs> and that's, that's how we get like some small little triangles within the big ones. So I did write down some measurements. Um, I think I'm going to do the large triangles in my gray 
that's going to be the big theme. Uh, so I need two that are two and seven eighths inch, and I'm going to round that up to three inches. Uh, then we'll just have a teeny bit that we'll have to cut off, uh, but I think that'll be easier just rounding up a hair. Because with the half square triangles, you can trim them down. So I always like eking up the sizes a little bit. Uh, it, it would be, you know, the two and seven eighths will get us the exact perfect size, but that's only if we sew perfectly and all that. And I'm not guaranteeing that. <laughs> so I always like making it a little larger and then I can trim them down. So I need two three inch squares out of this. And then I need one each or like one of two different colors that are a square that's three and a quarter, which I'll probably round up to like three and a half. Yeah, that's the plan. Okay, so two, let's start with two three inch pieces here. We'll see if this works. I'm not sure I've made this block before either. Uh, that's like really why I'm excited about this kind of mini project that we're doing here. <laughs> Mini project to finish a big project. Oh, we have these. Were these three inches? Oh, oh, there we are. Perfect. So I can just steal from these fellers. Excellent. That makes my day for real. Uh, less cutting. I'm done with that. So I'm just going to cut my two three inch pieces out of here. But yeah, I'm, I'm having fun with this. Just kind of exploring these uh, pretty traditional blocks. I mean, there's zillions of ways to make this because people have been making these forever and have come up with all sorts of tips and tricks for it. So I'm sure you, if you've made these, you might be doing them in a different way than I am. Uh, we haven't really explored all the different ways, but one of these days we'll have to do like a whole half square triangle project again. We've done a few of those actually, but uh, I don't know. I keep coming back to those. And we'll do lots of different ways to make it. Uh, all right, that was nice. I'm really happy I gotta just get those done. Okay, so now I need two colors to go with it. And I'm just grabbing from my stack, um, my stack of stuff that we use in the Orofill block. And I'm just looking at these two and I think these would be freaking beautiful together. So I'm going to just grab those. I'm just going to kind of taking from the top, really. <laughs> oh gosh, that's bright, bright blue. Uh, so, all right, we need one square of each of these, about three and a half is what I'm going to do. And this looks pretty square, square enough for what we're going to trim these down. So if these, you know, I'm not going to spend extra time squaring that up. It looks pretty square. So three and a half. Half. There, this corner with the two halves on. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. I'm hoping this works. I, like I said, I, I don't think I've made one of these blocks before. The theory of it makes sense. You know, the instructions make sense when I look up how to do it. But these half square triangle ones get a little... Uh, you got to use that spatial reasoning and stuff of of the brain and <laughs> sometimes sometimes that's not always shooting on a hundred percent all right and a three and a half inch out of this guy let's just find another i'm just gonna look for another basically square area <laughs> so i don't have to do more cutting three and a half inches scooched a little. So we'll have one more day of making these. So I don't think we'll get through all 20. Pretty sure that, ugh. Okay. Boo. Definitely we'll need to switch the blade here soon too. Uh, I don't think we'll get through all 20, but we'll, we'll get, get close. I'm really happy with our progress on this project. Okay. Next up, I believe, so here are our pieces. We have our two larger colorful pieces and our two slightly smaller gray pieces. So these ones we're leaving for later. 
Right now, we are going to make half square triangles out of these two. We're going to make two sets of half square triangles, and we're going to do it the same way we did last night. So we're going to put them together like so. And you know what? I am going to draw that line on the diagonal because that is super helpful. So we're going to sew a quarter inch from this diagonal on both sides of it. So we'll do one side and then we'll turn it around and do the other side. So right sides together. All right, and this is this is where we start sewing on both sides of that. This I think would be fun to do a whole quilt of these two. You just get to sew a pile of half square triangles and be kind of fun. All right, let's get the leaders going here tonight again. We're definitely adding to our leader and ender stack by working on this little mini project here. We're making the same half square triangles, really. All right, so now let's sew on the other side of the line. So I just, we sewed it this way, I'm just rotating it and sewing on the other side. I think I was pretty hefty with my seam allowance there. So that's, that's why I wanted to make sure that I cut this a little bit bigger. Because I think I'm being a little too hefty, like a little too wide with my, with my seam allowance. Which means I'm left with less of the real fabric, so my piece will be smaller. We'll see how we, so, see how it goes. All right, let's move on. Okay, I'm gonna grab my nice little rotating cutting mat that comes in handy. All right, so we sewed on either side of that diagonal, and now I'm gonna just chop it right on the diagonal. Get that glove back on. Hi, everyone. I'm just checking on your comments and stuff, too. It's a little, I know I've been a little lax on, um, the comments. So I'm, I'm happy you guys are talking to each other and stuff too. Uh, with all this cutting, I find it's a little more difficult <laughs> to pop up and, and see the comments, but it is nice to see you. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Marie, Linda, uh, Noeline, Tracy. Nice to see everyone. Wow. Okay. I am seriously in need of a new blade. So if, if I'm, and I'm not putting my glove on. If there is, if you have that happen where you just have like one tiny thread and another just like a tiny thread holding your piece together, that means you somewhere on this you have just a nick. So like if you rolled over something or, you know, it just happens. So it, it's, the blade is going over and then it, and then it, that nick happens, but there's no blade there, right? Because it's a nick. Um, so you're skipping like a thread or two. Uh, and that's, that's kind of what ha what's happening here uh, when you only have like one little thread. So we have a nick somewhere in this blade. This is just a bummer because I feel like we just did that blade. Whatever. That's why you, I don't know. I always order lots of blades all at once because you, you go through them. Okay, let's give this a press. So I'm going to just press them both. We'll press them both to this red side. All right, we'll see how this goes. I'm kind of excited. So those are two pretty half square triangles, if I do say. Those are some nice colors together, I think. Uh, we have that red and the red is in here too. So that looks, that looks pretty. So now in theory, these should be awfully close to this size, the three inch now. Yeah, so I could, I could trim these down, but we're gonna be trimming them anyway. So what we're doing next is we're actually gonna make another half square triangle with this new piece. Like we're gonna pretend that this is one square and then this is our other square for the half square triangle. And we're gonna do the diagonal where it chops this one in half. So I'm not gonna do the diagonal this way, uh, where it would be on this already sewn diagonal. I need to do it 
like crosswise, so it's sewn down here. And then we should end up with two half square triangles that look like so. So we have, you know, this half square triangle and this half square triangle, but since this one was made up of a half square triangle already, we got that like two, two piece there. So we'll have one on that side and one on this side. There we go. And because we're making two of them, we should have four. So I think we have to do this exactly the same. Now, normally I would draw on the back of this, but this fabric just, I wouldn't be able to draw. Why don't we, let's do it this way. I'm gonna fold it, but since it doesn't fold well either, I am just gonna press, press down the diagonal. Just kind of lightly. And instead of my pencil line, I will have that fold line there. So I can go on either side of that line. I think that'll work good enough. Gosh, I can barely even see that line. You know, I could do it on this side too. Maybe we'll just do that. I'm just going to do that. Let's, let's draw a diagonal on, on this. I just want to be as exact as I can from, well, now let's press this out. <laughs> let's get that flat again. I think I'm actually shrinking it by pressing it, but oh well. I'm going to draw the line on this side so I can see it. We're going to do the same thing though. We're going to sew on either side of this diagonal. I think we're going to sew them exactly the same and then they can rotate where we want them to be. I think that is the plan. It is helpful, that little drawing a line there. Okay. Um, so right sides together. We'll be trimming these down to that two and a half inches once we're done here. So I know that this, this back is a little bit bigger, but it's not going to matter um, once we trim it down as long as we're kind of centered. All right, let's give it a go. Both sides now. And in theory, these should be pretty close to that two and a half inches when we're done, which is what we're assembling our uh, four inch pieces. It's kind of a neat trick, this sewing, uh, sewing uh, already made half square triangle to just another square. I think that's kind of fun. All right, I'm just trying to kind of center it on this side. And like I said, we could have cut this down, but that seemed like an extra step that wasn't really necessary. All right, so I'm gonna cut this one that we just did off. And let's get on the other side of it. All right, and the second one. Awesome. All right, and then another leader to get that off the machine. Gosh, we're almost done with this one. Well, we got to cut down the middle. We're done sewing this. Oh, no, we're not done sewing with this one. We got to sew all these pieces together yet. Ugh, all right, definitely getting ahead of myself, I guess. And we got all that trimming and stuff to do now, which takes some time. Ooh, I hope this worked. Should. Hee <laughs> cute. All right, let's uh, let's cut down that diagonal. We'll get all those dog ears trimmed off too. I 
I wonder how well the block lock ruler works when you have um, this extra seam in here. We'll have to see. So hopefully we did this right. Oh, I'm kind of nervous. They are kind of pointing in different directions a little bit. Well, we'll come up with something. If this turns out weird, we'll just make something out of it. It'll be a different block. <laughs> but I think we're okay yet. Just give these guys all a little press. We'll start with, start with this guy. Oh, I guess it would make more sense to press towards this dark side. So I'm going to flip that one up. Because the seam, you don't want to fold that seam if you don't have to. Because it's working hard to stay straight. It's not going to want to fold. So it makes more sense to fold towards the direction of the one that doesn't have that seam to deal with. Pretty. And whenever I, I'm folding, like we're, we're wanting the seam to point towards the left, to point towards the dark side, I always have the side that I want it pointed to on the top when I, when I press. So like I'm putting this dark side up because then when I fold it, uh, the seam will stay in that direction. Well, I think we get to decide what bit we want as the pinwheel too. If we want the white or the, the floral or this red. Okay, let's see how we can rearrange this now. <laughs> I might actually have to look at the thing. This is where, this is where I confuse myself real quick. There like that maybe? That and rotate again. Uh oh, this is definitely not right. These guys all go to the middle somehow, don't they? <laughs> all right, let's see. We may have totally goofed this up. Let's let's check to see if we did this right. Okay. We have. Let's go light and dark. Ugh, some are pointed funny ways. All right, let's put this one here. Yeah, let me know if I just totally messed this up too. Okay, where does this one go? See, I feel like this is different. So this is actually, there's another, um, so <laughs> actually I think I might have done this wrong. So this is the double pinwheel, and in theory I probably shouldn't have done that way where I where I put the two layers and so on either side. I should have cut them all up. This is actually, I think, called the whirly gig. Um, where, where you, oh my gosh, where you, um, have the pinwheel with the one, but then these other ones are all pointed different. Hold on. There. So I'm not going to get this quite right. We're going to have to switch to around. Oh goodness, I don't know. There, I think one of these is called like the the whirly gig instead of the double pinwheel. <laughs> so we may have done this wrong. Yeah, so this, I think this is called the whirly gig when you have the two in the middle and then it, it switches. So we did it a little different. We're gonna call this one the whirly gig or it's the, the whirlwind or the whirly gig. Uh, let me know. Uh, which one if you guys find out but it's it's different because we did that double the double method like what we're doing here in theory we should have cut them all out separately and then just sewed triangles together that would have got me there um but oh well <laughs> this is our new one we're gonna do the whirly gig instead of the double pinwheel i think we'll go just like this because i think if i start switching these too much we're gonna get all crazy yeah i think i think that's the design right here hi okay i'm gonna cut these one at a time because 
I'm going to confuse myself if I don't. So, all right, let's, let's get this guy happening here. Ah, yeah, it is what it is. This is definitely not the pinwheel, but it is the whirly gig, so it, we're, we're close. All right, so with this, I need to pay attention to this diagonal, too. So that needs to be on the two and a quarter mark, which this doesn't really have. But I have the two and a half inch mark, so that um, if that's right on, right on the line, we should be good. Two and a half. Yep, I think right there does it. Well, this way I gotta make make half square triangles the way I like making half square triangles. Uh, you can actually make a half square triangle by cutting a triangle and cutting another triangle and sewing it on the the hypotenuse here. Um, you don't have to do that double way where I sew two and then cut down the middle. Uh, we would have gotten there if we would have just cut actual triangles. But, oh well. We have something else. Okay, so this guy goes like so. Okay, next. Ooh, your comments are stuck. Hold on here. I'm missing a lot. Okay, there we go. And like so. So hopefully we do a little bit better on the hourglass block today. Although I'm not mad at this one either. I was excited for that little pinwheel in the middle though, but oh well. Sharon says, there's no quilt police here. You can do what you want. Oh, phew, that's good to know. <laughs> yep. Uh, sometimes you're just hard on yourself. Okay. But we will have that pinwheel effect with the gray, so that'll be pretty. And this is actually a block. <laughs> This is actually a normal block, just not the one that we are going for. Two and a half. Now we've made hourglasses before. That's the next block we're going to do, the hourglass block. We actually made a whole like kind of baby quilt out of it. We did we actually gave it away. It was a giveaway uh, to a viewer here and uh, I have no idea how to make them. So I had a, I had a, I to completely forgot how to make them, but I knew there was some little trick. So I had to look it up again. Um, and I think I have it figured. There we go. So we'll see. It might just be one of those days though where the quilt block gods are not working out. Okay, two and a half. There we go. And rotate there. 
<laughs> Alright, so there we go. That is our whirly gig block. I think it's pretty cute still. So, alright, I'm going to put these two together. We'll sew down that line and then sew down this line. I'm going to keep it just in order so I can remember what I'm doing here. Alright, flip. So we do actually, we can actually nest the seams of this diagonal and that should help us sew a little bit. So let's do it. grab the other one kind of nest those seams together too all right and we'll use this leader I trimmed it off in order. So this is the top one and the bottom one. Ooh, they're connected like this though. So like so and like so. <laughs> Let's just peek again. Yep. Okay. That looks good. So this one will press this direction and we'll press the other one the other way. Okay, last little seam. So ideally we want these points to meet. You could do that pin method to really get it to match really, really well, but I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to just fold it over. Let's nest those seams together and I'm going to aim. I'm going to aim for where those seams cross and then I should be pretty close. We're not getting all perfect. It's a bonus if it turns out perfect. Alright, I'm aiming for that where it crosses over here. Okay, I think we did pretty good. Line up this end. Pretty big seam we're going through there. Oh, I'm almost out of leaders already. It's actually almost time to cut more um, more fabric for these leaders and enders. This is all like old clothing and stuff. So it's almost time to go to the bin of more old clothing and uh, see what else we can uh, get to add to this quilt. All right, let's, let's not even peek. Let's just give it a press and see what happens. Ooh, it's looking good. Ooh, that looks good in the middle there. So that uh, our points are meeting up great on the inside there. That that looks really nice. So I'm I'm happy with that. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to do. I'm going to just press it open. Let's just do it that way. It's pretty thick there. Uh, and I pressed this open on a couple other blocks like this. So might as well just do it. There's actually a little pinwheel method to work on this this back, but Laura's just pressing it open. Squish it down. It's almost a, Jocelyn says that is a pinwheel. It's just about a pinwheel or a double pinwheel. Um, the error I made was I did that double sewing method 
uh, you know, where I sewed both diagonals and then cut. What I should have just done is cut my squares and then cut them in half and then just had a bunch of triangles and then lined them up all perfectly. They should have actually all been exactly the same. And by doing it this way, we actually get a mirror image of them. So that's actually wrong. Um, we want we wanted them all the same direction. And because they weren't all the same direction, they were mirrored images, I had two one way and two the other. And that's why ideally for a pinwheel, like all these red ones would have been on the inside and the, the um, cream would have been on the outside, but I would have had to make them all the same. So that was the, that was the, where I went wrong. I tried to just do that double um, mirror method of making the um, half square triangles and that's what threw me. But this is a, this is a version of a pinwheel. I believe it's called a whirly gig. Um, it's either the whirlwind or the whirly gig, one or one or the other. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they all have their own special names. But there we go. We were close. Close is good. Another cute little half square triangle block, though, and I, I do really like all these colors together. I think that's super fun. So I'm gonna cross it off. I'm gonna actually even label it whirly gig. I don't know how to spell that. I'm gonna put a little question mark just so I can double check that. Um, all right, check mark done. So we have this column done. Uh, the next one I want to do is this hourglass, and I believe we actually get to the way I'm going to make this. So I'm still going to use that double sewing method, and I think we actually get two out of these when we're done. So we'll just have a straight block hanging around. We'll have to make like a, a, a coaster or something, um, or put it on the back. We'll put it on the back of the quilt. That'll be good, because we're going to assemble the back of the quilt out of all of our excess scraps here. And, uh, you know, so we'll have one little hourglass quilt as a scrap. So I need two squares for this. I must have, I wrote this down earlier, like when I first drew this up. So I'm just going to go on, on this guide. So I need two squares that are five and a quarter inches each. Okay, five and a quarter. Let's see, so I need the five and a quarter of this. So normally you would stack your fabric and cut them both at the same time, but again, because I have this pretty awkward fabric here, lots of awkward fabric, because um, I'm just using it from the, from the excess from the quilt, we'll, I'm just gonna find a spot and cut them separately. Uh, this doesn't look quite five inches. This would be a good spot for it though. Nah, that's four inches. All right. Let's just, there's a good square. Yeah, I'm just gonna, there's this nice kind of pure square here, but I'm gonna cut it out of there. <laughs> we're just doing it. Let's, I'm gonna rotate it so we're like so. And I don't even think I'm gonna square this up either. I'm just gonna cut, I'm gonna assume this is square enough and, um, Cut my, what was it, five and a quarter inches? Yeah, five and a quarter. Five and a quarter only, so let's go this way. Five, let's scooch it up for the quarter. Good, all right, we got it. Oh yeah, it could be for the label. That's a good idea, idea too, Sylvia. Yeah, we could um, use the extra for that. All right. Oh goodness, I don't like cutting from this angle. I got a little crooked there. Okay, one square. All right, let's pick another fabric. So these two are on the top, but these are pretty bold. I, I'm thinking maybe we can go with one of these smaller pieces. Are these five inches though? One, two, three, four and a quarter. Okay, so these won't work. So let's just, let's see this next batch of fabric, what pops out of here. Okay, I think we just used this though, didn't we? Yeah, we like literally just used it and I already forgot about it. So <laughs> let's, we'll put this in the bin here and well, this is pretty. Why don't we do this one? 
It's got a lot of patterny stuff in. This pink one's awfully pretty too. There. Let's do this one though, because this has a lot of pattern in. I think it'll be more interesting than using a solid. I guess I'm just gonna... Gosh, how do I get a triangle or the... I think I'm gonna... Ugh, let's just use the corner. This is eating up enough. We'll eat it up some more. I try to, you know, in my head, I'm like trying to preserve the nice edges, uh, or like, you know, trying to use the stuff that's already cut, but then I'm like, well, we're using this. We're going to use this up in this quilt anyway. I don't need to save, save it. Let's just, let's just use it. Oh, Sharon's asking, if I had to do it all over again, would I use the gray material still? Or would I choose a cotton material? Cotton material, for sure. However, I don't think I had... I wanted to have, like, one consistent color going throughout. And uh, for this this quilt, the Orophil quilt, the suggestion was to have gray throughout. And I, and I only had this gray. And I really didn't have enough yardage of cotton fabric, because I don't really have... I do have a... Eh, yeah, at the time, I don't think I had any fabric on the bolt like this or any like yardage it's I just had like fat quarters so I just didn't have enough to um enough to go throughout the quilt and I knew I wanted one color for sure to make it throughout the quilt but yeah I don't think I would have chosen this again however I am liking it in the quilt I like kind of these stripes and stuff and I'm glad I'm using it for something, otherwise it would have just been sitting in a bin somewhere. So from that sense, I'm, I'm happy I'm using it. Um, I think this is probably more for clothing or something, but... Uh, yeah, it wasn't easy to work with this whole time, but we're almost done using it. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line down the back of this. So for an hourglass, again, this escapes me a little bit, and I know we've done this before we made a whole quilt just of hourglasses. Uh, but in my head, I can't quite remember, like, physically, like, my body doesn't remember doing it. Um, but I looked at some instructions beforehand, and I think we just make a half square triangle, and we end up with two again. But then I think we just take them and, like, put them next to each other and then rotate one so that the, the seams are going opposite directions. And then we make... Then we do, do we just sew that together? I think we might just sew that on the diagonal. I don't know. We'll see. But I know you start with two half-square triangles. Uh, so let's do that. Two big half-square triangles because we're going to be putting them back together again. Smaller. Same like, same like the one that we just did where we had to start out with some bigger ones. And we're actually going to end up with two. All right. Let's just try it. Just gonna get this a little bit more in place. I feel like we're up to some large pieces here now. I'm not used to working with pieces this big. This isn't my little baby uh, four inch squares anymore. This big chunk. All right, I need some more uh, leader and ender bits here. Grabbing from my bin. Gonna have a lot of this plaid in it. and get the other side.
So let's trim down that diagonal. And then I think we'll press both of these to the dark side. Ooh, that did not feel like it went all the way through. Oh, we did. Good. Oh, Kathy says, it's the perfect fabric, the gray, for this. It ties everything to everything else. I do think that, like, I, I do, I am really happy, because I knew that the quilt was going to be all sorts of different colors, um, because that was the whole theme, that it's all different colors for each block. So it, it, it was nice having like the one kind of running theme. I, th I think like gray is nice because it kind of is neutral and it goes with anything. But I think if you used anything, any color, like all the way throughout, it would have been fine. Like a navy would have been pretty or like, you know, even like a, you know, even like a bright red or something like just, but that's like the one unifying thing. So I think... I'm happy that I had like that one unifying fabric throughout because everything else was going to be different for each one. Like every, that's why I have so much fabric, uh, leftover fabric here is because I did each block with a different fabric for my fat quarter bin. And uh, yeah, so we have tons of excess. That's why, that's why I'm trying to use up a ton of it in the sashing. I made really big sashing pieces and I'm going to try and use up a ton of it in the in the back of the quilt too. That's one of the reasons I didn't do the setting like Pat Sloan did, just because, um, yeah, I needed to use up more of this fabric. So I think we just, you know, we put them opposite like this and I think, well, that doesn't, that's not right. Okay, there we go. So we put them the same. We just, um, we don't rotate it, rotate it 45 degrees. We ro rotate them 180 like that. And our seams, okay, this is starting to, now, now my body's starting to remember it a little bit. So we can nest these seams together. Uh, and uh, then we can still do, like draw the, on the line here, even though I can't really draw here very well. We'll just aim. Um, I'll draw a pencil here and then I'll just kind of aim for the rest of the way. But now we should have two, we should have a, that's, this is the hourglass quilt. Oh, that's pretty too, that gray and the blue. We should have one on that side and one on this side. So we're getting two out of this deal, uh, which is kind of fun. I'm just trying to nest these. Well, let's draw a line on here first. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about these. So I'm just drawing the line on this top piece because I won't be able to see it on there. I'm just going to aim for the rest of it and hope for the best. I could do that like pressing fold thing, but meh. Okay, so I'm going to just try and nest these. I'm just going to have to feel for it really. All right, I think we're decent enough like so let's try it oof kind of wish I had my um, big uh, extension table on here I could use the extra flat space for this but I think I, I think I can hold down the seam a little bit We'll get this started and then I'm just trying to hold where these um, folds get sandwiched together here and I think I think we're okay. Let's get the stiletto out here though to help me hold. Okay, and now I'm at the point where I'm just going to aim <laughs> for this diagonal. Really, it's like, you know, I'm having this point here should still be like the 16th or the quarter of an inch there. We're just gonna aim. We're just gonna try and sew straight. Eh, it's not too shabby. Hopefully. Let's take it off the machine and we gotta sew that other side. All right, so rotate. Ooh, again, I'm gonna just aim. <laughs> 
aim for the center. So it's kind of like... Alright. That's good. So we'll cut it down the middle and we should have our two hourglasses. and we'll be done. Let's see how we did though. Oh good, that looks like a nice nested seam. That is a perfectly matching seam. That's good. That I would like to think that that means this one is too. Great. Ugh, okay. I like these a lot. I think I remember liking these a lot too. I could make, I could make another hourglass quilt. That's fun. Oh, we should probably, these are probably big, so we should probably trim these down to four inches, or four and a half inches. Let's see, at least one, the one that we're going to use on the front. We didn't really trim the other ones down, but I think the other ones sort of ended up the right size. Oh, one, two, three, four. Oh, we're at four and a half. Okay. It, it felt a little bit bigger, so we're fine. I'm not going to trim this down. We're actually a little small. Uh but it'll stretch out a hair. All right, I'm not going to worry about it, but, you know, since I'm here, let's just trim off some of these dog ears. Getting picky now. I'm leaving my hands far away. So I don't have the glove on. All right, we got that guy, and let's do this one too. So two hourglasses. We got a two for one here. So yeah, I'll definitely, this will be part of the back. I'll just, I'll just keep this with well, where should I keep this so I don't accidentally put it in? I'm going to put it with, um, well, no, I don't want it mixed with that. I'm going to just put it in my scrap bin here, I suppose. We'll, we'll get down to it at some point and I'll remember, oh yeah, I got that, I got that extra one in there. I think that's probably the safest place for it so I don't mess it up with these other ones. All right, and I think that is that. Let's, um, I'm going to just... Oops, mark that one off. And then let's take a look at them all again. I think that's probably all we're going to get done tonight. Hooey, got you done, Hourglass. That feels good. All right, what do we got left? We have the Sawtooth Star. So this one looks like rectangles and squares. And then we do four flying geese units. So we're actually going to need like eight. Ugh, this one might take a little time. This is a little bit, little bit bigger, a little bit more of a deal. Um, okay, so the Sawtooth Star, we got the Disappearing Nine Patch, which I have not done before. And it's not actually a really great one for uh, a 4x4 four four block, because you have to start with thirds. So, let's see, start with a nine patch, cut out of, cut in half, oh, two times. So, we'd have to start with some bigger pieces there. This one, I'll probably have to look up some measurements. Um, but this one we can do... Uh, this bear paw is very similar. Well, these are half square triangles, so this bear paw and the attic window here and the spool. And actually, this spool, the attic window, and these bear paws all have the same size half square triangle, it looks like. So we could just make a pile more half square triangles tomorrow, but I, I kind of want to stick with finishing a block because it is Friday and we won't be working on this again for a little while. So I don't know. Let's, what do we think we can get done? I'm kind of tempted to do this disappearing nine patch and maybe this attic window one. 
that seems like something we could maybe do. And then we would be left with the spool and the sawtooth star. I'm just thinking those, the spool and the sawtooth star will take a long time because it has so many uh, half square triangles. And same with this bear paw that just has a lot of half square triangles. And, you know, from the last two days, that will take some time. So I think tomorrow, let's try the attic window and this disappearing nine patch. I think those will probably be the easiest of the bunch, but I still think busy enough that we'll probably only be able to make two. All right, that's good progress, though. I'm happy with that for sure. All right, let's kind of, I want to lay all these out again. So let's just scooch some stuff out of here. So we just have tomorrow on this, and then it's a, a new a new month. So we will have, first of all, this is it for the embroidery of the month. The Fuzzles embroidery of the month will be done. And uh, um, the new embroidery of the month will be released on Monday, which is the first. It's already March. And uh, yeah, and then we'll be working on the granny square quilt. Ugh, I still really like that one. Just simple and pretty. So I think, where are we at? We're kind of close to 16 now, right? So we can get like four rows of four here, maybe. Let's switch these around so we don't have some red ones next to each other. Ugh, all these blocks together are just so sweet. Um, all the, just the basic blocks are all so cute. Get a little higher up. Oh, we got three down here. Okay, so we have 15 done, five more to go. This is so cute though. Like I want this to be its own quilt. Like just with a little like bit of sashing in between, you know, like how I'm leaving a little white space. This is fun, all these different colors. And then again, with the, just the gray holding it together. I'm really liking this. I should have made like a bunch of each of these when I did it. Then I could have it like for the back of it and we have tons of extra fabric still, but this is cute. This should be its own thing for sure. All right, I am loving these. So here's our hourglass block. That was fun. This is uh, our not quite a pinwheel block. I think again, I'll have to look it up. I think it's a whirly gig block. Uh, <laughs> they all have their own names and I, I think that was the biggest thing. I, I know I've heard a lot of these quilt block names before, but I never knew exactly for sure what they were. You know, it's, there's these, just, just these terms that quilters will, will throw out and as if everyone knows them, right? So, um, <laughs> it was kind of fun to do a little bit of research and dig in like, oh, that's, that's what a double pinwheel is or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's been, this has been fun just to kind of go back to basics and, and learn some of these blocks and hopefully I remember some of their names <laughs> uh, and how to do them uh, because they come in handy when you do bigger blocks. Uh, like I said, a lot of these are, are building blocks to larger, larger things. Like you put some of these together and all of a sudden you have a large fancy star. Uh, they're kind of, kind of a neat like that. Uh, but all right, so we have one more day working on these. Uh, we'll do those other two blocks that I mentioned, and uh, I'm liking this project. And uh, we're farther than I thought. I think next time we work on this, uh, we're going to have a free week. Uh, we have a free week the, the fourth week every month. But next month, we actually have two free weeks uh, because we have the, a full week at the end of March that is... Uh, a free week and then the week after that is split like perfectly in half between March and April so we're gonna treat that as another free week and so I'm thinking we could come back and work on this that free week and uh, kind of get this guy get the top of this thing done I think we might get sashing and everything sewn that would be something uh, <laughs> or or bits of it sewn parts of it sewn some rows but yeah we can lay it out and stuff too so it's coming. We're doing it. <laughs> All right, you guys. I will see you tomorrow. Have a fabulous weekend, and I'll see you then. Or a fabulous rest of your day. I'm a little ahead of myself again, I guess. All right. We got one more day. It's Friday yet tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Have a great evening. Good night.